Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well this Sunday morning. Um, got a word today and we're just going to go through it and see um, what God has for us. Um, last week we talked about just being real and and by being real we help people uh, come to Christ. And so just sticking with that same situation, the same message, just going to see um, more about how God is encouraging us to be who we are and to um, use what we've gone through to reach others and to not be ashamed of it, but to use it to uh, help others come to Christ. So let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for this morning and we ask that you would bless this word. Lord, give me the right things to say and make sure it's from you. Lord, ask you to bless it that those that hear this may be able to use it to live a Christian life for you and that um, they will have a better understanding of what's required from us according to your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, just want to start with some scripture. Um, I'm going to go to Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. And it reads, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderer threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked for him, asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, who you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Saul is one of the biggest conversions in the Bible, and it's because of who he was. And so it's important that when we talk about what conversions are happening now, because we still are witnessing for God, we're bringing people to Christ and we're introducing them to Christianity, though there, there are conversions that still happen to this day. And I really want to talk about how this conversion became one of the biggest conversions and why are conversions not seen as strong as what um, Saul went through. Um, it's kind of like Saul was a murderer of Christians. Like he murdered Christians. That's what he did. Now I mean, he, he felt like it was his mandate to do that. Like he was, that was his job on earth to do that. Luke referred to it as simply he, he, he laid waste the church. And he says that responding to Paul that he, he didn't see Christianity like Christians saw it, of course. He saw it as his duty to, um, to destroy the Christians. And so that made the church spread, and it separated the church into different countries throughout the, um, that area. And when we think of convergence, Saul, when he, after this, he later became Paul. So you'll hear me refer to him as Paul um, sometimes in, in today, uh, when I speak of him today. But soon Christians will be going back to church, and we won't be scattered everywhere that we are. And there are things that happen in our lives that cause us to get that focus on God. And in his case, it was Jesus coming to him in the bright light. But there are things that are going to happen in our life that's going to have us maybe not, we are maybe already are Christians, but it's going to bring attention to what our walk should be. And like he told him, he said, um, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. And God is sending 
assignments for us, what we must do. And maybe you've seen your bright light. Maybe you've had um, your experience like that. And now you just need the motivation to do what um, God is telling you to do. But because of his past, his conversion is known as one of the biggest conversions in the uh, Bible. And why is Paul so important? Why is it so important? Because Paul's writings, he wrote over, th he wrote 13 books you know, of the New Testament. And his, because of that, our theology, our, our basis of a lot of our Christianity is based on Paul's writings. And Paul, based on his history, was not the best who you would think would have been the person that would have done this. And uh, he wrote most of his um, writings are to the churches that he um, had um, that he either started or that he had um, leadership over. And so those letters are what we use a lot of times to um, construct our doctrine and our um, beliefs. So I, I must say that it's important that he did that, but his his writings were so thorough and so poignant that it helps us to know what a Christian should do. And I say that because there are so many times that churches and individuals take it upon themselves to give their opinion of what we should do, but his word, what he has written is very clear. And that's why it's important that you know the word for yourself so that you would know what the Bible is telling us to do. You shouldn't have to hear it from others that is so readily available for you to read and to, to know. Um, the church turned away because of this, no, not turned away, the church turned because of this one moment that happened in Paul's life. And it turned for the better because Paul, because he, whatever he found his hands doing, he did it wholeheartedly. He put all his all into it. So when he became when he became converted and became a Christian, he put his all into that. Now, we all, I've, I've grown up in church and I've seen how our leaders le explain to us Paul's life and they teach us from his writings, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then you have uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have gone. The new is here. So these, these are writings that we have in the Bible that you know everybody has sinned. And they all can believe and come back to Christ. And so the, what's, what's also um, important to notice about what Paul does Three other times in his writing, he just doesn't convert. He converts and then he testifies about what his life had been through and what his life was before. And he testifies about the conversion. And a lot of times we don't do that in church. We want to co get converted and then we don't want to talk about it as if it never happened. I never had a past. I never had a life. Those experiences are there to aid those that are going through it now and need to be converted. So it's important that we know that it's one thing to be converted, but we still should share um, what we've been through so that those can understand that it's obtainable for them, that Christianity isn't some far off um, goal that's not reachable. So it's, 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 we reach people and we ask them, you want to come to church? You want to accept Jesus as your personal savior? You want to get saved? But as soon as they're saved, we don't do what, what happened to Paul. We, we take Paul wholeheartedly. Paul was Saul. He saw the light. He got converted. And we started living according to what he had written in the Bible. But when we bring people to Christ now, we challenge it. We judge them based on their past. We don't just give them from that day forward. We don't say, whatever you did, you're now a Christian and we're going to move forward. What we do is we keep haunting them with their past. We keep saying, but you know they used to do this and you know they got it. They know they, you know they do this and da 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 da. But we can't keep doing that. We have to decide that if we're going to win them, we're not winning them to belabor them or to 
um, cause grief for them. We're winning them so that they can become Christians and follow Christ and win other souls for him. So it's important that we have to keep in focus that what our goal is that we're not here to bother people and make them feel like becoming a Christian was the worst thing they could have done. We, we make, we, we lead people to Christ and then we steadily bring up the past. And they said, I could have stayed where I was. Nobody was talking about all the stuff I did, all the bad stuff I did in my past. So we don't want to be the church that does it. We don't want to bring them to church and say, now that you're saved, we as a body of Christ want you to, you know, always feel bad about what you did in the past. No, we're, the, like the second Corinthians says, you are a new creature from that day forward. Now, I, I got a video I want to show you. And the reason I want to show it to you is because it reminds me of, of the situation with Paul, because in, in this case, this is what happens to me. This is what happens in the church. People get saved and then they they are made to feel bad about everything they've done. Kanye West has decided he is going to live a Christian life now. And all we have is a person's word. When people come to Christ, all we have is their word that they're going to do what they say they're going to do. That, hey, I'm accepting Christ. I'm going to live as a Christian. We should treat them based on what they say until they show you different. I mean, you're going to always, you should always trust a person's word, especially when it comes to this, because that's what we've been asking them. Do they want to do the whole time? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to accept Christ? And then when they do it, we should celebrate with them and we should wholeheartedly support them in their decision. So there's so many people against Kanye and because of his music in the past, because of what he's done. But let's watch this clip and then we'll talk a little bit more about um, Kanye. I, I want to say I yeah. love the fact that my daughter wants to go to church and her, she has such a positive thought association to go into church because it's outside of the traditional four walls and outside of the pews. And now that God has called me and I've, I now have given my life to Jesus Christ and I work for God. Um, now we have Christian innovation in our time. There was a time when the Medici family and all the greatest artists did work for the church. And now it seems like all the best designs and everything have this adult edge to it. And I have a family, I have four children. I've been married for five years. And the perspective, <laughs> because you asked me a question last year, did, uh, you know, did having a daughter uh, change my life? And I've completely turned around from what my perspective was last year to where it is now. And I, I feel like there's so few individuals in a position like mine to be able to give their opinion and stand up and say that this is what family is about. And I feel that God is using me and using the choir and using my family to show off because it's like all these things. How many things in your life where it's like this isn't in service for God, but it seems like you're going to get more out of it. This is where you're going to get the better job, better cars, all this. But we're in complete service to God and you the feel business born is again? thriving. The, was that, Do you feel uh, born again, uh, Kanye? Do you feel uh, like, yeah. would you consider yourself to be a Christian music artist now? I'm just a Christian everything. Uh-huh. <laughs> everything. everything. Yeah. And you've done, it's interesting you said that about your daughter, because I think you've made, with your services, made church fun to go to for a lot of people. Uh, yeah. People are saying, like, oh, gosh, I want to go to church. And you never hear anyone say that, really. I mean, <laughs> certainly not young people. And you're doing this thing where you're bringing to people together. And, and you know, that's, that's pretty good, I think. Oh, you, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow night. I, I, I believe him. I mean, I believe that Kanye in his heart is sincere in trying to live a Christian life. Now, he's been given a bigger platform. Too much is given, much is required. That's I really believe that. And he has been given a lot. This man is a billionaire now. And he's decided that he's going to use what God has given him to win souls for Christ. 
And instead of taking time to judge him, maybe people should just enjoy what he's doing and learn from what he's doing because this is the new age of the church. The church is not, people are not going to keep settling for this made up Christianity, this made up gospel, this religious acts, and it doesn't line up with the word of God. People can read, people can understand, and they're no longer going, going to just keep going with the status quo. They're going to confront you. They're going to say, this is not in the word, and you have to stick with the word of God. And that's really how it should be taught. Whatever the word says is what we should, what should, we should agree with and what we should build on. We shouldn't be adding what we want to. If Paul lived right now, I could see Christians now just saying, you know, they would try and tame him, if, if you will. They would say, no, don't say that. No, no, don't talk about how you used to kill Christians. Don't talk about that you're a murderer. You know, that, that's what you used to do. Do not, don't bring that up. We, we know, you know, or, or they would be in the club. You know, he's killed a lot of people. You know, he's had a lot of people um, bound and taken away. As for, because they were Christians. He went to the synagogues and he pulled them out. They would, they would do that now. They wouldn't treat Paul like they do in the Bible or revere him like we do as Christians now if he was in these times because Christians have developed this I'm better, I'm, I'm perfect attitude and it's been passed down for generations. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't live the uh, sanctified Christian life, but what I'm saying is we can't continue to act as if we're we're set apart but we're not um better in the in, in the fact that we we have done something so miraculous that have made us on the level of jesus christ himself or god we're not gods all we are are sinners saved by grace that's what we are we are all sinners saved by grace that's all it can be we can never claim that we came here perfect we did not come here perfect and so we can't treat people that have come to Christ at our, at our leading, at our suggesting, and then they build a relationship with him, with Christ, and then we treat them as if they're still the former person. They are a new creature, and we should treat them that way. But Kanye, what Kanye was saying is, what he, I went on to listen to more of it, he, he gave his all when he was in his music. He gave his all when he was in his apparel company. And now he wants to give his all as a Christian. So I'm not saying, oh, go listen to Kanye. I'm not. My point is not to support or, or un, not support him. But my, my conversation is that we should treat everybody for face value. If they're going to accept Christ and they said they accepted Christ and they're doing their best to walk their way, that's how we should treat them. We should be an example before them. We should show them that this is how we walk alongside new Christians. This is how we teach new Christians. This is how we disciple new Christians. This is how we introduce new Christians to the gospel because it's not going to be um, less people challenging the gospel and less people saying oh my grandma's church i went to my granddaddy's church and it was always there's going to be more people that are going to keep saying church is not what they want and what kanye is trying to do is make church relevant he's trying to make church relevant for his generation for his and that's all that we can do that's what i try to do i try to communicate in a way that my peers and younger people would want to hear it then they want to understand the gospel and I'm not going to change it. It's the word is the word. We have to stay solid on what it says, but we have to make it relevant to what's going on and what they understand in these times. So, like I said, I'm not here to promote Kanye, but I'm here to say that I understand how people turn on him and make him feel like he's not doing the right thing, even though he's doing what he feels God has led him to do. So if there's anything I would say take away from today is you have to you have to make sure that you being a sincere Christian. You can't you can't take it upon yourself and just make up rules, make up um, things that are going to make people um, do a certain way and, and act. I, I think I wrote um, we have to go with the love of God versus the fear of what Christians think. So we can't say I'm, I, I want to scare them into being Christians. I want to scare them into loving God. No, we want to demonstrate and exp um, implore them to be Christians by our love and by our example, not for fear 
And then they become Christians because they're going to judge me if I don't. They're going to this. No, we want them to see our lives, see our walk, and then become Christians for that. So as we go out this week, let's, let's decide that we're going to do what Christians do. We're going to be an example of a sincere Christian, a godly Christian, so that people will know what God is doing and can do in their lives. I, the last statement I want to say, what if we prepare for the future instead of or as much as we study the past? What if we prepare for the future as much as we study the past? So we should, we should put time into planning for our future. Just, and, and just like um, Kanye has planned that he's going to do this music and he's going to set up um, times that he could be at different churches and share the gospel and bring others to Christ, there are going to be people that have never thought about being a Christian because of his, the way he's presenting it. And we have, somebody's got to be there to receive them. And somebody's got to be there and say, this is how you walk this life that Mr. Uh, West talked about and he sang about. And so just like we study the history of the church, we have to say there is a future of the church. And what does it look like? And what is my role in it? And, and get prepared to do what you're supposed to do in that. Don't always think that your, your role is just to be uh, reactive. You can prepare the way for those that are going to come after, um, after us so that they would know what Christianity can be. So I thank God that Paul came with Saul and turned to Paul. And then I also just thank God that people like Kanye West are still being drawn to Christ and that there's still hope and that we have to be relevant and that we can make a difference if only we would pay attention and listen to those that are coming to Christ and not pushing our ways on them, but pushing God ways in front of them for them to model after. All right. That's about it. Lord, we thank you for the word today. We ask that you would just bless our week and just help us to be model Christians, Lord, that we would do it the way you have called us to do it, that we won't find ourselves pushing, pushing um, ways on people, but that we would push and be an example of your way in front of them. We thank you now. We thank you for all the things you've done for us. We thank you for blessing our church and blessing our people. Lord, help us to just be patient and to be um, um, steadfast and unmovable. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.